I'm not coming from a very rich family. My father couldn't send me to London or United States for my college education. No, I couldn't attend one of those prestigious high schools or colleges in Istanbul like most successful women in Turkey did. Or I didn't inherit a multi-million dollar company to have a good start. Nor I didn't have a very high IQ. <laughs> but I know that I did, however, have a desire and determination to be at a better place. So my father was in the military. And while assigned to Sarikamish, Turkey, my twin sister and I were born six years after my older brother. Two years later, my younger brother joined us to complete the family. As a young girl, it was my desire to be an actress. <laughs> <laughs> and this carried through high school. I secretly took the exams and I got enough score to study performing artists at Turkish theaters. So when I informed my parents about this great accomplishment, guess what? They told me that they didn't want me to entertain others. Being an act actress is not a good occupation for a young woman. They suggested to me that I should better choose an occupation, either as a teacher or a nurse, which was better suited for women. I registered to 9 September University Education Department to become a teacher. I was loving college life and everything was really good until in 1979, at the age of 20, I lost my father who had just turned 50. Losing my father was such a shock and I was in a great pain. As this was my first time hitting the reality that everything has an end. This unpleasant event changed my personality. I was panicking, panicking that life may not be long enough to fit all of my goals. So after graduating from the university as a science teacher, guess what? It's my luck. I was stationed to Kars. So this is my hometown, and I have to travel all the way down to Kars. What is the difference between school and life, do you know? In school, you are taught a lesson and then giving a test. But in life, you are giving a test and teaches you a lesson. So true. So life in Kars was a test introducing me to a life that I had no idea that existed and from which I learned a great lesson. I learned that, trust me, it takes seven days back then in 1979 to travel from Izmir to Kars, from my hometown to Kars, by a cargo train, which is approximately 1,400 kilometers. I also learned that a human being can survive at negative 25 Celsius degrees, and I didn't know that. <laughs> Izmir is warm all the time. <laughs> and also they can walk in the snow as high as your waist. My life in cars humbled me. It made me to appreciate what I have. However, I was not be able to endure this lifestyle more, no more than three years knowing the fact that I have several years ahead of me and I couldn't survive. So I resigned from teaching and I went back to my hometown, Izmir. It was a good decision because I obtained a teaching position at Izmir Büyük Dersane. I decided to enhance my English to be able to move from being an ordinary teacher to extraordinary teacher. But of course, this decision didn't born in overnight. I was facing some challenges. Some of my students who goes to stu uh, high schools, the curriculum is in English, was bringing me to some science uh, problems uh, in English, and I wasn't able to answer those questions. So I said, 
Why not learn English? But um, this would become a major life-changing decision, but it was the one only I believed. I just learned later on that when I left the teacher's lounge, most teachers were talking about me and saying that, poor girl, she's just dreaming. <laughs> she's going to learn English, and she's going to basically go to the United States, maybe get an education. She's dreaming. To prove them wrong, I began attending Turkish American Language Association because it's the only thing I could do. I mean, I'm a poor little uh, private school teacher. And I graduated from both language schools in 1986. I couldn't stop. I set my mind up to come to the United States to get my education or attend a college. In addition to my full-time job at Izmir Büyük Dershane, I started giving private lessons to as many students as I could fit in one day to save money for my trip to the United States. Was I nervous? Of course. What am I thinking? Like learning English, trying to come to the United States to where? I have no idea. But I said, why not? Only one year later, I did it. I came to the United States, I went to language school, and later met and married my husband, an army officer, in the same year. I was very proud of myself, and life was good, until my husband stationed to Honduras for six months. I'm like, I'm new here. I just learned English, good. I came to the United States, good. I got married, good. But then my husband left a new country, a new town. I didn't know what to do. I went back to Turkey, to my mom's home, and until my husband's return. After my husband's return, we were in Wisconsin. We moved to New York State. And I became a mother. My older daughter, Gizem, 11 months later, my younger daughter, Asena, completed the family. I also learned something else as a military wife. And I didn't know, trust me. <laughs> my husband did not tell me when I got married with him. As a military family, you have to move from one assignment to another assignment every three years. Every three years. But in the beginning, I really was excited about this idea. No, uh, moving to a different assignment every three years on military expense and seeing different places. But later, this included one of my other life why nots. Why? Anytime I wanted to get a job, after I revealed my status as a military spouse, guess what? They told me that they found every excuse not to hire me because they knew that in three years or less, I would leave the job. So why invest in me? While I was silently saying, why not, in, why not invest in me? I work hard and I will be dedicated. In addition, my degree was not accepted in the United States to teach science unless I get my equivalent degree from this country. The pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. I took this difficulty, not getting a job, not being hired, moving all the time, as an opportunity and decided not to be selective on my initial jobs. Regardless of the state we lived, New York State, Wisconsin, Alaska, Tennessee, and I'm not kidding, uh, we, I, we have seen all those places. I didn't care. I opened a home daycare. I became a nurse assistant, worked at nursing homes. I became a nighttime McDonald's shift manager, and I worked at the ladies' department store, and I sold Mary Kay. <laughs> <laughs> you name it. I did everything. So, you don't know 
until your cup is bumped, what is inside it, right? This bumped made me to learn about my father's side. I survived. I said, you know, I'm doing pretty good. So as a married woman, I was holding two many roles. I was a wife, mother raising two children, and also getting a job that any job that I could get. Finally, I said, enough is enough. Why not try? This time I was serious because I realized that these short-term jobs would not take me to anywhere. So therefore, I gave a decision to go back to college. Yay! In 1997, I graduated from Austin Peay State University in Clarksville, Tennessee. This is my second bachelor degree, in addition to the degree that I obtained from Turkey from 9 September University. And I majored in biology. But while attending college, <laughs> my roles of being a mother, wife, and student didn't end. I was trying to do my best on, at everything, and it was very, very tiring. I remember sleeping in the car between classes, and I'm serious. Anytime I had time, I had to go back to my car, take a nap, and go back to the classroom. Following my graduation, I obtained a high school teaching license, and I started teaching at a high school. The end, right? So I learned English. I came to the United States. I got married, I got my bachelor degree, and then I got a teaching license, and um, I'm star I started teaching. No, it's not at the end. I was very proud of myself, and life was good, until we moved once again, this time to southern state of Mississippi. Even with this, I realized that, that would, this would not be take me to anywhere. I couldn't make a career. So I went back to college and started my graduate degree at the University of Southern Mississippi. After graduating in year 2000 with Master's of Science degree in education, I started working as a college instructor. Do and, <laughs> right? We moved to Germany. I had to start everything all over again. So in Germany, I was lucky, and I was hired by the Department of Defense as an assistant director to a military child care facility. Shortly, I was promoted to director position. I was loving my job, managing 55 to 60 employees, being responsible from a big center, and giving briefings to general. I became so important. <laughs> but this did not last long. And my husband was reassigned back to United States in 2005. It was like, you know what, soap opera or Brazilian TV shows. You, you don't need to see me for a couple years. When you see me again, I'm at the same place, <laughs> starting all over again. So it was like a vicious cycle, having to start everything all over again. So this time, we had a life discussion and family decision for my husband to retire from the military and for us to settle in Alexandria, Virginia. Of course, it was a new start. I applied to every job announcement I could, ignoring the grade level and position. And finally, I was hired by the Federal Aviation and Administration, FAA. Five years later, I reached the highest grade level a government employee can get due to hard work, determination, and resilience. Currently, I hold a senior level position at the FAA. I work as an air traffic safety inspector inspected many towers. I need to learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. The important why not in life is not what happens to you, but how you react to what happened. What about you? Will you be able to say why not to your life challenges 
just like I said, and then try to change your destiny. Thank you.